Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. As you can see, something changed. So in future, I will record myself too and have that as a little box in the bottom right corner. I think that's just a little bit more personal. However, welcome back to a new tutorial series. In this series, we will make this cool running app many of you have been waiting for. So I will first of all quickly go through this app, which features we are going to implement in this app. And after that, I will give you an overview about the architecture this app will use. So we will use MVVM for this, but I will explain which fragments we have, which activities we have. We will have a, th a service and how all that stuff works together, basically. So as you can see, this is basically the welcome screen of our app. Here we have to provide our name and our weight. The weight will be required to calculate the burned calories later on. If you now click on continue, then we will be prompted to accept the location permissions, which we will do. We will click allow all the time. So we can also track the location in the background. Then we can click on this floating action button to start a new run. So to basically track a run. And you can see we have a timer and a map view. And if we now open up the emulator options under the location tab and routes, then we can set up a custom route here that the emulator will basically simulate. And you don't have to worry about that for now. I will show you how to set up all that in detail. Just to show you that now, let's click on play route and click on start in my app. And then you can see the tracking will start and it will draw a red path where the route goes or where the player runs basically. And if we now want to minimize the app, then you can see in the notification bar the, the service is still running and it is still tracking. We can pause it here and we can resume it again. And if we click on the notification, then you can see we are navigated back to the app and there's our route. And if we now click on stop and finish run, then the run will be saved in our database with a cool image that was basically a screenshot by the map view and some useful information like the date, the duration of the run, the distance, the average speed, and the burnt calories. And then an, another cool feature of this app is the statistics fragment here that basically tracks our total time, our total distance, total calories burnt, and the, our average speed in total. So our average speed of all runs. And it will also display that average speed over time in this cool graph for which I will use the MP Android chart library. And finally, you can see we have a settings fragment here in which we can simply edit our name and our weight. Oh, and what I almost forgot is that we can also sort our runs. You can see I have a little spinner here. We can sort our runs by running time, distance, average speed, calories burned and date. But right now this won't change anything because we only have a single run, of course. Let's choose distance. You can see the list updated, but we only have that single run. Of course, that will be the first run in our list. And by the way, guys, I'm happy to announce that I am a YouTube partner now. So as you maybe know, I do all of these videos and posts in my free time. And all of that really takes up huge amounts of time. And currently I'm doing all of this for free, except for my Udemy course, I don't have any income. And even the, the Udemy income is by far not enough to live from that. And if you want to support me and my channel, then you can whitelist my channel in your ad blocker. This way you can still enjoy my videos and also contribute to higher quality videos in future. If you use the Adblock Plus plugin in Google Chrome just as I do, then you can just go to your ad blocker here to that icon and go to the settings page. And you can click on allow whitelisting of specific YouTube channels. Make sure to check that option, then restart your browser, go to my YouTube channel, click on any video here, for example, that one. And then you can go to this ad block icon again, click on it and click on whitelist Android devs channel. By doing that, you make sure to whitelist my channel and then ads will show to you. But this way you can also support me and my work. So if you really do that, then I'm really grateful for that. And if not, then that's totally fine too. I'm annoyed by ads by myself. But yeah, as, as I said, if you want to support my channel, then this is an option how you can contribute to higher quality videos. We will use the MVVM architecture in this series, which is just my personal favorite architecture and the favorite architecture of many of you too. Then we will use navigation components for navigation. Obviously, we will have a room database in combination with coroutines to save our runs, to delete them, to update them and so on. And this project will use dagger for dependency injection. 
However, this won't be a tutorial about Dagger on its own because Dagger is a very complex topic and I could do an entire series on its own about that. But I will try my best to explain everything as good as I can. But it still can happen if you never work with dependency injection or Dagger before that you don't understand everything at every part of this series. But you won't need to understand all that Dagger stuff to understand the whole project. So then you only won't understand the Dagger part, but you will understand everything else. But as I said, I will explain the Dagger stuff too, but I can't explain it in that much detail that is actually needed for Dagger. So just to encourage you a little bit, if you don't know Dagger, just start with this series. You will understand the big picture of this app. So now I will give you an overview about the architecture this app will use. We will use a single activity architecture here. So we will only have a single activity that contains five fragments in our case. First of all, we will have the setup fragment, which will be the fragment that only is displayed the first time we open our app where we can enter our username and our weight. Then we will have the run fragment, which is the fragment that contains all of our saved runs. So that just contains that recycler view and we can sort the runs in there. Then we will have the statistics fragment, which I also showed you before, which contains our total statistics and that graph. We will have a settings fragment in which we can um, edit our username and our weight. And we will have our tracking fragment, which will be used to track our run. Then this tracking fragment will interact with the tracking service, which is the service that actually tracks our location. So we will need a service for that because we want to track the location in the background. Because of course, usually when you go running, then you don't have that app open. Instead, you will have the display turned off and put your phone in your pocket. So we really need to make sure that the location is still tracked in the background for which we will use this tracking service, which will be a foreground service. Then we will have the main view model, which is as the name says, the main view model, which will be linked to our main activity. And we will also have a second view model, which will be the, um, the statistics view model. I could also put all the, the data inside of the main view model, but I kind of like this idea of separating this statistics data from the other data that we have inside of the main view model, because the data for the statistics will only be used in the single statistics fragment. So that's why I just separated them, but you could also just put them together. And then both of those view models will be linked to the same repository, which will be our main repository. And that repository will get its data from our room database. So that is basically an overview of the architecture that we will use for this app. And I also have to say that this is for tutorial a rather long project, because if you watched my new app series, for example, then this app, the fitness app here, will definitely take at least twice as many parts as the news app series because this is much more complex and we have to consider much more stuff. But don't be discouraged by that. I promise you, if you follow through this series here and take your time to understand everything, then you will learn a lot. And I also learned a lot with this series. So really do this, take this time and you will learn much more than just watching theoretical tutorials. I promise you. So please let me know in the comments below if you will follow through the series. That would make me really happy to teach you something new. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.